No, right? Farewell, Rochefort. I... I know not what to say. The others, they... they are gathered at Fortal Manor. Alright. To Fortal Manor we go then. But in time, we find those bastards and kill them all. And avenge Lord Halshafon. Don't. Please. A knight lives to serve, to protect, to sacrifice. There is no greater calling. Leave me to mourn and give chase for my son and for the nation he loved. Go! His sacrifice shall not be forgotten. By... son. I... I could not stand there in silence, but... When all others had forsaken us, Lord Hoshavon took us in. Our beacon of hope in a world of darkness. He did his utmost to raise our spirits so that we might face our troubles with courage, with conviction, so that we might face them as, as knights. I, we must press on on our mission. Tatar, please pray return to your duties at the Forgotten Knight. Let us go speak with Sir Emmerich, if then. I worry for his well-being. My friends, I am in your debt. Think nothing of it. Your wounds are healing well, I trust. Some wounds do not heal. The Founding. The Scriptures, a thousand years of lies, all to deceive the common man. Nay, our own brothers and sisters. For the blood of the Knights Twelve flows within all our veins. You knew this to be true. You knew, and you concealed it. I should be interested to hear how you came by this knowledge. But yes, you have the right of it. The architects of Ishgard, King Thorden and his knights twelve, entrapped and butchered the great worm, Ratatosker, that they might partake of her eyes and thereby transcend their mortal limits. Upon learning of their treachery, Nidhogg was consumed with a murderous and justified rage. I dare say you know what followed. The great worm slew the king and half of his knights. Aye, but Nidhogg was subdued, and his eyes plucked from their sockets by the knights that remained. Their one mistake was to show mercy, for from his brother Hreisvelger did Nidhogg receive a new eye, thus rejuvenating his form and empowering him to embark upon an eternal quest for vengeance. Whilst Thordan's son Haldreth took one of Nidhogg's eyes and learned to wield its power in defense of his people. 
Thus was the first Azure Dragoon born, and ever since that time, his honored successors have risen to drive Nidhogg from our lands whenever the worm has returned to plague us. I ask you, my son, will you answer for my sins? Will your son and his son answer for me as well? What do you mean? If a man cannot atone for his sins in the course of his all too fleeting life, must his progeny then be held to account? Must every subsequent generation be judged as well? Thorin's betrayal of Ratatoska was an unconscionable, unforgivable sin. Should we then, as his descendants, meekly surrender ourselves to an eternity of punishment? Nay, say I. I would not see our children sacrificed in a vain attempt to appease an implacable foe. Dragons are not like us, my son. To they who live forever, the wrongs of antiquity are as those of yesterday. No reparations shall ever suffice. This fact alone should serve as ample justification for our actions. Yet some refuse to see it as such. For men like you, who yearn to commit themselves to a nobler cause, a more compelling narrative is required. This is your solution. This is how you protect our people. You have given us a lost cause, a death sentence, with your compelling narrative. You but doom our countrymen to give their lives for a lie. And they do so gladly. Highborn and lowborn alike are proud to serve, to fight and die for their country. And what would you say to them? What would you tell the wives who have lost their husbands? The mothers who have lost their sons? That their loved ones died for naught? I... Uh... Over the course of a thousand years, countless men have donned these robes, and every one of them came to accept the necessity of this solution. Once, I hoped you might come to accept it as well. Do not despair, my son. Soon I shall free us from the sins of antiquity and bring about the change you so fervently desire. If he has spoken with others, I would have their names. Escort him to a cell and question him. Thoroughly. Your Eminence. You saw something, did you not? A vision of the past? So this is the power of the Echo. Would that it had shown you a finer moment from my past. T'was an exercise in futility, as you saw. Faced with the firmity of his conviction and his many ready rejoinders, my words deserted me. To be frank, I am embarrassed to recall it. A friend once impressed upon me the importance of differentiating between words, deeds, and beliefs. Were he here, I suspect he would judge your father's conviction to be no more than rank, self-serving delusion. Even so, I cannot help but wonder what manner of change he intends to bring about. I have given some thought to that as well. 
During the battle within the vault, the Heaven's Ward demonstrated strange and unnatural abilities. Aye, the manner in which Sir Zephyrin struck down Lord Horshafon was unlike anything I've ever seen before. The spectacle called to mind King Thordon and his Knights Twelve as they are depicted in scripture, holy powers and all. Mere fabrications, which have become objects of faith, instilled with the belief of countless devoted souls. Seven Hells! If Lady Iceheart can use her own body as a vessel for summoning, I see no reason why others could not. Are the Heaven's Ward truly so reckless? Unbelievable! As they fled, my father spoke of Aziz La. Though I know not what he intends, I fear no good shall come of it. His ambitions are too great, and his minions too powerful. We must find the Heaven's Ward and stop my father before it is too late. Master Muir, Master Elfino, I, Emmerich, Lord Commander of the Temple Knights of Ishgard, do hereby entreat the aid of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Our aid in preventing whatever it is the Archbishop intends? Your aid in bringing him to justice. Too much blood has been spilled for the lies he perpetuated. No more. So we're going to kill him for killing Harsha. Yes. Yes, of course. You two were close, I know. Much has changed since our orders found him, but our duty to combat the primal threat has not. If the Archbishop and the Heaven's Ward are guilty of the crime of summoning, then Fen and I shall stop them. Would that I could join you in your pursuit, but alas. My father's absence has thrown our government into chaos. Ever since the founding of our nation, there has been an archbishop to show to serve as the guiding light for the masses, a force of stability to counterbalance the High House's ceaseless maneuvering, convincing the people to recognize the truth of its of our origins would would have been difficult even with my father's support. The road ahead is that much more fraught with peril without it. Yes, walk it we must, for unity is more vital than more vital to our survival than ever. After all, Midog's death did not mark the cessation of Dravanian hostilities. Far from it. We will have great need of each other in the days to come. You may ever count on my lance, Sir Merc. To my dying breath, I shall defend Ishgard from the Horde. If I may, Lord Commander. I would like to assist the Scions in their search for the Archbishop. Fen, Master Elfino, pray attend me outside. Very well, with me, Fen. I believe we have much to discuss. How's it going, girl? The Soiel. The Soiel? Vale? I think it's Soleil? Was eastward bound. So I sent word to Camp Cloudtop on on the off chance that the airship passes nearby. Sure enough, Lady Laniane, I think that's how you pronounce that, informed me that it had been sighted near by her scouts. Then the arch, then the archbishop is somewhere in the Sea of Clouds, or was, not long ago. Better than zoom in. The airship has, has not been seen since it appeared in the north, northern reaches of the Blue Widow window. Alas, because of the re because the region is firmly held by the Vanu Vanu, it's not easily accessible from Clap from Camp Cloudtop. House Halione has yet to establish a foothold. We will need not only an airship but a captain bold enough to risk the beastman's wrath. 
Oh, I think I know the perfect candidate. Fen, let us pray visit Master Garland at the Skies at the Sky Steel Manufactory. I see. Then I will take my leave for now. There are other matters which require my attention. Master Garland, how's it going, my dude? Ah, the dastardly duo. What mischief have you two been getting up to lately? You... you haven't heard, have you? I hardly know where to start. He... was a good man. Sid, have you ever heard of the Azisla? The Archbishop spoke of it before he fled. No, but it's probably some source of phenomenal cosmic power if that's if that's key to his plans. From what he told Fen, the Asians tried to tempt him, as they tempted Gaius with the Ultima weapon. Even as he's even if he spoke true about playing along, I can see him attempting to seize it. As if we another as if we needed another reason to pursue him. Well, I'm convinced. The Enterprise the Enterprise is at your disposal. The Enterprise is at your disposal. Come to the airship landing when you're ready to depart. It's just as well. After pulling you out of the fire these last few times, I reckon I was due to I was due to deliver you into it. <laughs> We're just inside of Alpino at this point. Into the fire? Is it in that case I should have informed Tatara of our plans. Here you go on ahead to the airship landing. I shall join you and on. Wow, they haven't used that in a while. <laughs> the boys have been hard at work preparing for our flight, and I'm pleased to say that we're ready to depart. Yeah! <laughs> one's British, one's Scottish. And that is, as, as soon as a certain... Ah... Uh, Forgive my lateness. Tatara and I had much to discuss. We still have no news about of the missing scions, but she assures me that Yuri Anger and Riol are pursuing promising leads. Come, come. We can continue the discussion aboard the Enterprise. The others are waiting. The other is awaiting. Oh man, he's British, right? But he's not like British like Alpha now is, or at least he was in like A Realm Reborn. Now I think everybody's British. I think they just hired a bunch of Brits. Um, I don't know. The others are waiting <laughs> for you aboard the Enterprise, Fen. Shall we get going? Oh, fantastic! I can only do it with so many voices. To the northern reaches of the Sea of Clouds, where countless isles yet remained uncharted. In search of a mysterious land known as Azizla, and the unmasked villain who sought to claim its secrets. Oblivious to the new threat which followed in their wake, they came. Yeah. 
From here, Cloud Camp Cloudtop looks rather far. Hmm. <clears throat> be on your guard, Fen. The Vanu could be anywhere, ever watching us as we speak. Vanu Vanu Rogue comes up behind Alpidel. Al. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Assuming the Soil is here, I doubt she will come to us. Should we begin searching the Isles in earnest? Of course, we must remain vigilant of the Vanu scouts as well. I would rather avoid needless bloodshed. My Alpine. That's the story. Gods, look at them. So many isles, so many places to hide. No, we must not lose hope. Here is... He is out there, Fen. And we will find him. You search the skies for the Soil. The Soil. But see nothing resembling the airship. That's what it is. Okay, I understand. I can do those now. Yes, let's do it. It's time for these dudes to get wrecked. <laughs> May have the effort was doomed to failure. Begs mercy of Netherlings, does not fight, does not wish to die. Was that Vanu being attacked? By... but by whom? Say hello to the Vanu Beast Tribes. Over there! Imperial troops? Mish guardians, seize them! They'll know where the Archbishop is. The enemy of my enemy. We've no choice. With me, Fen. Protect the Vanu. Excellent. If I can remember how to play Red Mage. <laughs> remember, Lord Hydras wants them alive! That's an order. We do have these areas that we need to spend the crap out of. Taliak, protect me! Taliak, you say? Also, we should be killing the Magus first. Spirits are down, she's there. Very nice. A gunship, she's there. Nice. Okay, new medicus, then he's done. Excellent. Let's take down this instrument. Really Where are you, Medicus? There you are. Die. Okay, a couple of Marcus. Alright, Centurion. Farewell.
detected. <laughs> Netherlings save Lonu Vonu from certain death. Showering Netherlings with thanks, like Summer Squall. Lanu Vanu knows not what wind bears Netherlings to Cloud Sea, but warmly welcomes them. Shows great gratitude where gratitude is due. Lanu Vanu owes much to more, much and more to Netherlings as saviors, as heroes. Zundu welcomes you. To village we go. To north. Come, come. Well, I mean, we might as well have, no? So the Gallians are searching for the Archbishop and believe that the Vanu Vanu knows something about his whereabouts. Methods notwithstanding, they may have had the right of it. I'll conclude what, that we should accept... I conclude that we should accept Lonu Vanu's offer of hospitality and visit his village. No. How's it going? Like breeze guides leaves to rest. Come and lay down your burdens, Netherlings. Lanu Vanu throws wide arms in greeting. Behold, Ok Zundu. Zundu. It looks nice. A far warmer welcome than the one you received from the Vin from the Vundu, I think. Vundu blossom blow hither and yon. Sounds like sound and fury, like aimless gale. Eh? What unseen lightning begets such thunderous report? Those are cannons. There you are. Did you see it? It's that damned flying whale again. Imperials are after it. Where? The white? He's wounded. By the twelve. That beast just eat an island? Oh, insatiable white! Oh, devourer worlds! Why must you torment us? Bah! Lanu Vanu wastes no more words on his unfathomable deeds. Come, Netherlings, come and break words with Chief of Zundu. I like how these, how the uh, Zundu, they only have one animation. With deep, with wisdom deep as nethers and eyes clear as cloudless blue, Vanu Vanu speaks, speaks for Zundu, hearken to his words. Netherlings deliver Lanu Nanu from claws of steel shod fiends and brood nobility. He knows not to ignore. Zephyr wins and brings before you with all haste. Soft rains to soothe the hearts and sunshine to warm. Gratitude of Sanu, chief of Zundu, is boundless. We are honored to meet you, Chief Zonu. I am Alphano Levelier, and these are my companions, Fenwyr and Sid Garland. We are come in search of an airship, a flying vessel of the other of the Nethers, which we believe is somewhere in the cloud of sea. In the cloud sea. Oh like two black steel shot contraption from which you save Lanuvanu? Alas, no. That ship belongs to the Gallian Empire, an old enemy of ours. 
though, not the enemy we are currently we are looking for at present. The men we seek wear armor purest white, and are led by an older man in white robes. Wait, Lanu, Lanu, he had tale of these netherlings. You do? Are you certain? As sun rises and falls and returns, we are. Zundel scouts can testify to words of Lanu Vanu. Aye, aye. Winds carry purpose of Netherlings to our ears as well. Netherlings seek key to Aziz La. Now we're getting somewhere. Tell us, Chief Zonu, what exactly is this Aziz La? Beware Netherlings, for blackest cloud portends greatest danger. Look not into the heart of the tempest. There lies the ancient birthplace of sin, home of forbidden secrets. To speak more is to cull the wind. But the white devours Isle. But the white devours Isle where key is kept. Deep within bowels of mighty Bismarck it lies, beyond reach of the foolhardy. And beyond ours. Rejoice not his gluttony, Lanu Vanu, for as stone gives way to water and wind, all yields to the white. This he knows, Chief Sonu. Madness of Vanu bodes ill for Vanu. 